Octopath Traveler's different systems are intertwined very densely, with every system complementing at least two other systems. We'll have a detailed look at how these interactions are implemented, starting off with the very core of the game, the combat system. The most important mechanic in the game is the weakness system. Each enemy, including bosses, has certain weaknesses. This is nothing new, and as in most other games, this increases damage. But the main part is that the enemy also has a breakpoint. Whenever it is hit by an attack it is weak against, a counter is decremented. When it reaches zero, the enemy loses all actions in this and the next turn, and the damage from all sources is doubled. You can use this break to either heal up, but ideally you want to attack. This means that it is faster to break enemies than simply always using the best abilities prior to breaking the enemy. Also, this essentially creates two different time frames in each battle. The time where you try to break the enemy and the turn afterwards in which you want to deal as much damage as possible. This creates quite diverse encounters and means battles usually don't get boring. The weakness system also has a nice addition. Basic attacks don't become obsolete in the late game. Let's look at Cyrus the Scholar. He can use only staves as weapons and does not deal a lot of damage with his basic attacks. Yet, even against certain bosses, it is often better to use this basic attack instead of casting a spell, simply because breaking the enemy is the top priority. This system perfectly complements the character's system. There are eight different characters, but only four of them can be used in the party at any one time. The characters have different classes and are thus limited to certain types of equipment. The Scholar Cyrus can only use staffs, whereas the Huntress Hanit can use bows and axes. The abilities of each character also have different element types, meaning that you are incentivized to switch the characters in your party depending on the enemies in your area. Lastly, there are boost points. Each character gets a single boost point every turn, but only if it didn't use a boost point in the previous turn. Up to five boost points can be stored per character, and up to three of them can be used to boost any combat action. Spells become more powerful, buffs and debuffs have an increased duration, and the number of executed basic attacks is increased by the number of used boost points. This means that a fully boosted basic attack will reduce the enemy's breakpoint by 4, which is something only very few abilities can manage. The boost mechanic makes the fights more interesting. If characters got them in every turn they'd often be used directly, that means making non-boosted actions obsolete. Therefore, there's the restriction of not gaining a boost point after using one. There is also a trade-off between using the boost points to break the enemy as fast as possible, thereby robbing them of actions, and saving these boost points to power up the strongest abilities to actually deal increased damage after the enemy has been broken. Another commonly seen action is defense. As in most JRPGs, it reduces the damage taken from enemy attacks. It has the additional benefit of making the character act faster in the next turn, though, and this is probably the main reason to use it. Taking into account the turn order shown for the current and the next turn at the top of the screen opens up several strategies. The boss is almost broken, but only has a single action left in this turn. If I break him now, he will lose this one action. 
But if I break him next turn, I can make him lose more actions. This requires some strategy and planning ahead, which in turn makes the combats more interesting. All in all, the entire combat system gives the player meaningful choices in every turn. Do I use the boost points to break the enemy faster, or do I store them to perform devastating attacks once the enemy is broken? The latter option means I'll have to play a lot more defensively and spend a lot more resources on healing, since the enemy will have more opportunities to attack. And how do I use the precious actions in turns that the enemy is broken? If I attack with all my characters, I might kill the enemy. But if I don't, it'd probably be better to heal up. Because broken enemies will always strike first with all their actions in the next turn. This is what makes combat engaging, as it allows players to use different strategies and do some risk management. With this, we've covered the very fundamentals of combat. And there's even more to this system, but that'll be part of a future video. So that's it for today. I hope you liked what you've seen. At the end of my videos, there's a music quiz. Can you tell which game this music is from? The solution will be revealed in the next video. Enjoy!